Welcome to this overview of the Key Vocabulary Routine. I'm Joan Sedita, author of the program, and it's a pleasure to provide you with some information about our training options for this program. The Key Vocabulary Routine is a five-step program for embedding vocabulary instruction in all content areas. There is no single best time or subject to teach vocabulary. Research consistently finds that vocabulary is best taught throughout the day in every subject. There are no special instructional materials or student workbooks for the key vocabulary routine. Instead, teachers use existing reading material to teach content-specific words. Because the routine provides a basic set of foundational strategies, students benefit from consistency as they move from grade to grade and class to class when the routine is used by a team of teachers or across a school. An ideal cohort of teachers for a key vocabulary routine training is any group of teachers of grades 3 to 12 from the same school. This slide lists the routine's five steps. In the next several slides, I'll provide some detail about each step and show classroom examples. The first step is to preview vocabulary before students read. The goals are to activate prior knowledge and provide enough basic information about unfamiliar words so students won't stumble over them when they read. One instructional suggestion for previewing is to have students take part in the process for identifying unfamiliar words. As you will see in the following examples, a student rating checklist is one way to do this. Here is an example from a social studies class. As you can see, students rate their knowledge of a word along a scale that ranges from no knowledge to knowing the word well. This example is from a science unit. The second step in the routine is the use of activities to teach new words along with related words. These activities are semantic mapping, categorizing, semantic feature analysis, and scaling. The next few slides provide classroom examples. Using these activities helps students make connections between words and their background knowledge. It also provides opportunities for rich discussion about words. Semantic mapping has two steps, brainstorming words associated with a key concept word, then categorizing those words. This shows the first brainstorming step from a social studies unit. This example is from science. For semantic feature analysis, a list of related words is provided along one axis of a chart, and different features are provided along the other. Students compare differences in word meaning by determining whether or not each feature is associated with the word. This semantic feature analysis is from a unit on geography. Here is a math example. For scaling, students are provided with a pair of opposite words and asked to generate as many related words they know along a scale. This is an example of scaling. Here is another example. The third step in the routine is to select a smaller set of specific content words to teach in depth. Students must learn thousands of new words a year and there's not enough time to teach all of them. Teachers need a model for selecting a smaller set of essential content words to teach in depth. During this part of key vocabulary training, teachers learn models for making those decisions. They also learn ways to teach everything about the word, including the word sounds, spelling, multiple meanings, synonyms and opposites, and use in context. They also learn how important it is to provide meaningful multiple exposures to words. For this step, the routine uses three graphic organizers. The frere, sometimes called the foursquare, the concept definition map, and two column notes. Classroom examples of each follow. This is an example of the frere or foursquare from an early elementary grade. This is a social studies word. This is the blank concept definition map template. This is a concept definition map for the word perilous. This example shows the use of two column notes. The vocabulary word goes in the left column and information about the word goes in the right. Here's another example from a math unit. The fourth step of the routine is to teach strategies for determining the meaning of an unfamiliar word. 
one strategy is to use the context to figure out the meaning. The second is to use word parts, including roots, prefixes, and suffixes. The fifth and final step of the routine is about promoting word consciousness. Rather than viewing vocabulary as drudgery or an unpleasant chore, which often occurs when students are simply asked to copy definitions from a dictionary, there are ways that teachers can motivate students to want to learn about new words. Various activities for using word play and word walls in the classroom are covered in the training for this step. Now that we've reviewed the program, let's review the training components, beginning with training for teachers. Initial training is typically two days. As the trainer presents each step in the routine, participants have an opportunity to develop practice lessons using their own content reading material. They leave prepared to start teaching the routine. Long-term follow-up is an essential component of effective professional development. In addition to in initial training, Keys to Literacy trainers facilitate follow-up meetings, both guided practice and small group sharing sessions, over several months' time. They are also available to observe and co-teach in classrooms. In order to build on-site capacity, we also deliver a two-day advanced training to educators who will become building-based coaches or facilitators. During this training, they have the opportunity to dig deeper into the program and enhance their own proficiency, as well as learn peer coaching skills. The final component of Keys to Literacy Professional Development is training for administrators. Typically, during a half-day session, participants learn how they can support building coaches and teachers implement the program. This slide highlights the three types of training and the typical amount of time allotted for each. In the next few slides, we'll review what is covered in each type of training. What will you learn in the two-day initial teacher training? You'll become familiar with the research about effective vocabulary instruction. You'll learn five steps in the routine I have described here and have an opportunity to practice the activities using your own content reading material, including some time to develop lesson plans for your classroom. During follow-up sessions, you'll have time to develop lessons using the routine with a Keys to Literacy trainer who will provide guided practice and feedback. It's expected that you'll also develop lessons on your own to use in the classroom between follow-up sessions. You'll also have an opportunity to share your lessons from the routine which you've been using in your classroom and samples of student work with your colleagues. A building coach facilitator can be a teacher, specialist, administrator, or any other educator who's participated in initial teacher training. A successful building coach is a good communicator, is organized and respected by his or her peers, and strongly supports the key vocabulary routine. In the two-day coach training, you'll gain a deeper understanding of the routine and how it can be applied to different subject areas. You'll also learn techniques for peer coaching. Participants in administrator training will receive an overview of the routine, including examples of its use in different content classrooms. Content vocabulary instruction is an essential part of a school-wide literacy plan, and participants will learn how the routine supports literacy achievement. Finally, participants will learn how to support teachers and building coaches. Here's some last general information about all the key vocabulary routine training. The delivery style is interactive. Practice activities are embedded throughout. Keys to Literacy provides PDPs for training as follows. Six for each day of initial training and six for each of two follow-up days for a maximum total of 24 PDPs. An additional 12 PDPs are offered for the two-day coach training. Graduate credit is available through Endicott College for the multi-day initial teacher training. The cost is $100 per credit. Finally, I thought you might like to know a bit about Keys to Literacy and the trainers who teach the key vocabulary routine. Keys to Literacy is a provider of literacy professional development, specializing in grades 4 to 12. All of our trainers are literacy experts and they have extensive classroom experience. All Keys to Literacy programs are research-based with a specific focus on comprehension and vocabulary skills. Keys to Literacy is based in New England and works with over 100 schools each year. If you would like more information about Key Vocabulary Training or any other Keys to Literacy programs, please visit our website or contact us via email or phone. Thank you, and I hope to see you at one of our training sessions.